Part 5. The Two Austins. Los Angeles, California. 4.58 a.m. On the deep shadows, under the 6th Street Bridge, amid the creative clutter of graffiti, someone had carefully spray-painted, in small, precise letters, History is dead. This was an extraordinary piece of clairvoyance, considering what was already beginning to happen to the fabric of reality. The words had been spray-painted in a few other locales around the city, mostly in the East LA Barrio, near Dodger Stadium, and on a wall outside Griffith Observatory, atop the Hollywood Hills. Nobody noticed. LA was brim full of seers who predicted various scenarios of mass destruction, natural and man-made. It was part of the scenery, along with smog and palm trees. But whoever had painted those three words throughout the city knew. Maybe they didn't know that they knew. But they knew. Officer Joe Lucky Austin, cruising under the bridge at 10 miles an hour, patrolling the empty street, certainly didn't notice, or know, or care. His attention was on the shifting shapes his spotlight was making, as it splayed through the rustling chain-link fence in front of the graffiti-decorated building. He hated working this section alone, but his partner had gotten food poisoning during roll call and there wasn't enough time to get a replacement. There had recently been a surge of white fence gang activity. A 13-year-old girl and her 4-year-old brother had been wounded in a drive-by yesterday morning and everyone was on alert for several known suspects. They were, of course, more well-armed than the police, and none too eager to be incarcerated. So Austin was not in a particularly philosophical mood tonight. He was scared shitless. He couldn't possibly guess how misplaced his fear was. It wasn't going to be a coked-up, Mac 10 wielding homeboy he would face. What he was going to run into this morning was not born of woman. It would be birthed in a storm of light, arcing into existence and ejected by the convulsing of two time zones that were swapping places in the continuum. A flash of blue-white light suddenly spilled out between the buildings a hundred yards ahead. Austin sped up, but he would arrive too late to see the nacreous ball of light hovering a few feet off the ground. Strands of energy whirled out from the surface to rake up and down the sides of the framing buildings, as if it were a drunk steadying itself. Loose debris and papers spiralled up, capering like two-dimensional ghouls in and out of the jagged bolts of light. A fire escape ladder and landing glowed a dull red, sucking up the rapid heat thrown off by the light storm. There was a cracking sound that rapidly rose in pitch, then a bright flash. Austin cursed and slammed on the brakes, just outside the range of electromagnetic disruption. Had he driven the car a few feet further, the headlights would have flickered out and the engine would have died. But the cop was mesmerised by strange lights dancing on the walls around him. They rapidly faded away. As he started to get out of the car, it was quiet, except for the distant sound of a stray dog howling. He took a breath. Ozone. Austin's heart thudded in his chest. He felt like he had just jogged a mile. No way in hell did he want to go into that alley alone. On the other hand, he was wearing a uniform, he was a skilled professional, and he was armed with a Beretta 9mm auto with 15 bullets nestled in the grip. What if it was just a transformer shorting out? Could start a fire. Austin sighed and, muttering curses, cautiously moved into the shadows between the two buildings. The cop glanced around, seeking forms in darkness and failing miserably. There was no street light here. It had been blown out or shorted out by... whatever had just happened. The vast concrete arches of the 6th Street Bridge loomed overhead. He was under it now, heading towards a dead end formed by a chain-link fence. Beyond, there was only railroad tracks, and beyond that, the concrete canals of the LA River. There was something odd about that fence. The officer furrowed his brow as his flashlight fell on a perfectly symmetrical hole cut into the wire. He stepped closer and noticed that the edges were smoking, still glowing from heat. 
Instinctively, Austin's free hand unsnapped his holster and rested on the grip of his weapon. The cop looked down. There was a smoothly cut spherical crater on the far side of the fence. It appeared as if something had simply scooped a section of the asphalt away. Austin tried desperately to suppress the urge to run. It was too bad he was so successful. He might have lived longer. Someone glided out of the night behind the officer, just a weird blur, gleaming somehow. It caught Austin's eye and he started to turn, sensing a presence. There was a sudden flash, as if someone had cut a single white frame out of his stream of consciousness. His mind skipped a beat and he was dimly aware of being flat on his face. A dull pain welled from his left cheekbone, which had been fractured when he hit the cold pavement. Hands were gliding over his uniform, something wet was flowing from his nose. Nothing felt right. His neck seemed to grate, as if it were pivoting on sand. As his sense of self began to detach, he wondered idly why a member of the white fence would want his uniform. Whatever the reason, it couldn't have been good. But that was somebody else's concern now. He had other things to do, like die. A cat wandered into the alley and looked at the far end. It saw a naked man kneeling over the body of the policeman, touching the uniform. The animal's pea-sized brain could not possibly comprehend what was happening, but its eyes saw nonetheless. The naked man's body began to change, turning dark blue. A silver badge emerged from his chest. Uneasy, the feline darted away. A few minutes later, the assailant strode up to the police car, wearing Austin's uniform and badge. The man slipped behind the wheel of the black and white. He scanned the cruiser's interior, the instruments and the controls. They were all familiar, deep in his memory, although he had never actually seen them before. An Electrocom MDT-870 computer terminal linked to the police network was mounted on the passenger side of the dash, its screen dark. He pondered it. It was the first time he laid eyes on it, but he remembered every millimetre of the generic model's circuits. He reached out and tapped on a key. The screen jumped to an online menu. Satisfied, the man turned the ignition, then looked in the rear-view mirror. It was a handsome face, with strong features, framed by military short brown hair. His grey-blue eyes were furrowed with deep concentration confident. The new Officer Austin, badge number 473, put the car in gear and drove into the night. It was only appropriate that he had assumed this particular identity. After all, he was here to protect and serve.